ഹമ <tries> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا عصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق رسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اما بعد in order to stay motivated to stay on track when people will set goals for themselves they look and take many things into consideration to help them reach their goals and help them to reach the desired destination they do want to get to So some people they focus on the fadail and the virtues of things that if it is I were to do this particular thing then look at how much thawab or rewards or virtues I'm going to get and that becomes some people's motivation in order to do things other people sometimes look at the consequences that if I don't do this then this is what's going to happen to me and that becomes the motivation for people to accomplish whatever they want to accomplish now when it is we look at islam as well we do find both of them so many narrations and traditions of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ayats upon ayats of the holy quran give so much of fadila and virtues for doing of many different things and likewise the opposite is also there for failure to do so many acts of obedience then allah and the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam they have also promised so much warnings and punishments that are there but in the mix and the in between there is one thing that the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam though he put into the hearts of the sahaba and into the ummah that if it is that they were to focus on that It's supposed to keep them motivated. It's supposed to keep them always looking into the akhirah, always looking into the hereafter. It will always keep them on edge all the time. Hence, the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says in one narration, "Akthiru dhikra hadi miladzat." He says to the Sahaba of the Allah Taala, "Whom?" He says, "Speak about it." mention it in abundance talk about it lots of times what to talk about the destroyer of all pleasures that is there talk about death he says talk about death that is there speak about it in abundance because when it is you talk about it in abundance then it creates within people hopefully the drive to change your lives and look into the akhirah look into the hereafter and do so many different things and sometimes we see it with human beings of our own selves that possibly they are diagnosed with something and then they are told hey, you got 6 months to live now their dreams that they had for their entire life that they weren't even desirous of achieving All of a sudden now they write it down that before I die I got to visit this place I got to do this action I got to meet this person I got to travel here I got to try this so many so many different things what's the motivation I only got 6 months to live 
Because I only got that little amount of time remaining. It creates the jolt within the human being that I want to do so many things. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam constantly informs, tells the Sahaba and by extension, the Ummah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you remember death quite a lot. That if it is we were to think about it, that my years that I were to have, how much am I utilizing all of that to gain all the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah, in the jannah, in the paradise that is there. So therefore the speaking about it is supposed to create that levels of enthusiasm that is there. But as human being, now that is something very, very strange. And it's one of the mysteries of the world as well. Why it's one of the mysteries of the world? Because for a believer and a Muslim, we very well know that it's connected to the soul of a person. And the Holy Quran says, "Yasalunaka ani ruh." That Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they came and they were asking you about the soul that is there, and the only revelation that came to the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, telling him about the soul that is there. That you would have simply tell them one thing. That the soul is under the Amr and the order of Allah and that's it. So it's one of the mysteries of the world that's there. That when the soul departs and separates from this body. Now we say this person is dead now. But what's that soul that's there and that separation that occurs? So it's one of the mysteries that is there. And since it's so mysterious... It does create the natural fear in the hearts of human beings. And people, they don't want to die at all. So we'll see people who will be making dua from here. That oh Allah, when I get to Medina, take my life there. Oh Allah, when I get in front of Kaaba Sharif, take my life there. And the first sickness they get, oh Allah came to the doctor. Oh Allah, Shifa, Shifa, oh Allah, cure, cure. So therefore, it's one of those things that, you know, it does have that mystery connected to it. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he once said, he says, Man kana, he says, whoever there is, ahabba liqa Allah, whoever wishes and wants to meet Allah, kan Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also loves to meet this person. Waman kariha liqa Allah, and whoever doesn't want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kariha Allahu liqa'ahu, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also doesn't want to meet that person as well. So the Nabi of Allah says this statement, and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala is there and she's listening. And then Aisha says, the Nabi of Allah, who is there that likes to die? The Nabi of Allah, who is there that will want to die? Now we understand, and if you ask anybody, everybody wants to meet Allah. But in order to meet Allah, this transitional stage has to take place. So Aisha is asking, O oh, Nabi of Allah, who is there that will like to, who likes death in the sense, we got to die in order to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala is told by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha, that understand it well. That if a person is obedient to Allah, if a person live a good life, then at the time of death, then Allah puts it in the heart of this person at that time. That love, that drive, that passion and want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point in time. So therefore the entire life they live obediently. Now everybody fears death. Now at that time of that now, when that malak and that angel comes, when everybody is present, everybody is there, now the conversations happening between the individual and the malak and the angel that's there. And this person is being told at that point in time, that come with me to the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come with me towards Jannah. Nabi Allah says, at that time, there will be nothing more beloved to you at that time than dying and than death at that point in time. And if any individual and any person, they were to live lives of disobedience, 
Then when that Malak and that angel comes, the promises that are going to be told, that punishment awaits you, so many different things. Now at that point in time, this person, they don't ever want to meet Allah. So as such, death for them is not beloved at that point in time. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one occasion, he enters upon one shab, one youth. And he says to this youth at the time of death, he says, how do you find it? You're about to die. And the Nabi of Allah is asking this youngster, he says, how do you find it at this point in time? And this youngster, he says to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Nabi of Allah, I am really hopeful of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Nabi of Allah, I am really fearful as well of Allah at this point in time. You know, will Allah take me to task for all the things that I have done incorrectly and wrong? And the Nabi of Allah tells the Shab and he tells this youngster, and he tells this youth at that point in time, that when death approaches, that these two qualities, when they come in the heart of a person, hopeful of Allah's mercy, fearful of Allah's wrath, he says, at that time, Allah then fulfills your hope and he saves you from all of your fears at that time. So at that time of that, all the hope that is there, Allah grants you all of those things. And all the worry and fear that is there, that Allah removes all of that at that point in time. Hence the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the believers, Tu'fatul mu'min al-mawt, that the gift of the believer is death. Because when this death comes towards this person, and the angels already are telling this person about all that he is going to get, now everybody is crying, everybody is wailing, they are already missing this person, and there is nobody happier to leave this world at that time than this person. The dying person is the happiest individual, because the Nabi of Allah says, Tu'fatul mu'min al maut the gift of the believer is death that is there. You ever see kids on Eid day? That you will have the presence for them. It matters not if the gift paper is newspaper. It matters not if it's kite paper, gift paper. They don't even bother about it at all. It's ripped the same way. Because no focus is on wrapping. They are so more concerned about what's underneath the wrapping that's there. Now lots of times, we get so caught up in the wrapping that is there and death in itself. I hardly look beyond the wrapping that is there, the pleasures that await the mu'min and the believer. We are so caught up in the wrappings that are there and all the different things, the accidents and the this and the that and all of that, the wrappings we are caught up on. That the little kids, they seem to have more awareness. No, look at the gift that is there. That's presented. It's just so much more glorious and excellent and good. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Tu'fatul mu'min al maut The gift of the believer is death. And then the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gives an advice. He says, Three days before the death of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anas radiallahu ta'ala and he says that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tamutunna. He says, don't die. Accepting that you have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three days before the Nabi of Allah himself dies, he is saying, don't die unless you have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how does a person have those good thoughts about Allah? Commentators they explain that when we live lives of obedience, we are motivated because we don't know how long we are going to live. So we are trying our very best to do as much as we can. Then just before death happens, then a person, Allah is fulfilling all of his hope. So at that time, all that he has in mind is only good hopes about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's only thinking about the promises of Allah. So the Nabi of Allah is saying, don't die except that we have good hopes. But we can't have those good hopes except that we engage ourselves in ibadat. 
We work diligently, assiduously in trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in one narration, إِنَّ أَخْوَفَ مَا أَتَخَوَّفُ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِ الْهَوَىٰ وَتُولُ الْأَمَلِ He says the thing that I fear most for my ummah are two things according to this duration. One, hawa, base desires, and tulul amal, hope for the distant future. He says for amal hawa, he says as for base desires, for your sudda and ilhaq, it stops an individual from recognizing and going to the truth. You know what he says? The Nabi of Allah says, Hubbuka shay yu'mi wa yusim. The love for something makes you go deaf and blind. It matters not who tells you how harmful and wrong something is. When you love something, you will always find a justification for it. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, When a person starts following their hawa, their base desires only, then what's the consequence? The consequence is, Yasuddu anil haq. It stops them from recognizing the truth. Look at the dua of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqa. Oh Allah, let me see the truth as truth. I want to see the correct things that are there. So the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that's one. Wa amma tulul amal. And as for hope of the distant future, what does that do to an individual? It stops an individual. So the first one, for amal hawa, for ya sudda anil haq, wa amma tulul amal. And as for the hope of the distant future that is there, there is no more enthusiasm, no more encouragement to do good deeds that are there. A person then starts to start doing less and less. Because they always think, I have lots of time remaining. I have lots of time remaining. So the hope of the distant future, it gets people that, no, I'm not going to do anything today, tomorrow. Not tomorrow, the other day. That's why you normally hear, whenever you have a routine, don't ever let two days pass because then it becomes a habit. Because after that, you will stop the sweetness of leaving it out and creeps in. And all you do thereafter is just leaves it out. All right, from Monday I'll start back. You know, on the weekend I'll start back. And a whole month will pass, two will pass, three will pass. So therefore, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells and he gives the ummah one thing of incredible motivation. Because the youngsters, those who are old, those who are healthy, those who are sick, those who are ulama, those who are non-ulama, those who are physicians and professions, there is one thing that we all share. We've got to walk through those doors of death that is there. But for the believer, there are so much promises and excellences that are there. So much the Nabi of Allah encourages that this is our gift that's there. But it will only be a gift to enjoy if the time that we have, we are able to utilize it properly. And when those angels, they come and give us those beautiful news while everyone is crying, there is no individual happier than this person at that point in time. And Allah mentions in the Holy Quran, Aynama takunu yudrikkumul maut. That wherever you are, it doesn't matter. That is sure to find us. Walau kuntum fi burujim mushayyada. Even though we will be in the most sturdiest and strongest and reinforced places, that is definitely going to come to an individual. So therefore, whatever amount of life has already gone, that's gone. We have a little more that is remaining. As the famous line of poetry is, Yesterday was history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is the present. Hence it's called the present. Take advantage of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me and you the tawfiq. That with our life that we have, we are able to utilize it excellently. And at the time of death, it be the best day of our lives. That we will love to meet Allah. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also love to meet us as well.